rosary is, is a deeply Christ-centered prayer when it's prayed properly. Always with Mary. Mary's always pointing towards Christ, and so is the rosary. The rosary is to enter into the mystery of Christ, to meditate on these mysteries. So when we are on the day when we are meditating on the sorrowful mysteries, the first mystery is Christ's agony in the garden. We, we use, so to speak, our imagination. We enter into his agony. Uh, we, we, in a sense, participate with Christ in his suffering. And we bring that before us and we let it um, challenge us and transform us. Many of these mysteries have to do with Christ's relationship to Mary, and there is a historical reason for that. The Rosary entered the life of the Church in the 13th century by way of St. Dominic, founder of the Dominican Order, a group of monks in the world, as it were, founded to respond to a particular crisis called the Albigensian heresy. In brief, the Albigensians looked out onto a world filled with pain and suffering and concluded that physical things, like the body, so vulnerable to suffering, must be evil in themselves. What Christ does on this view is come to rescue humanity from this rotten, good-for-nothing flesh. If you're an astute student of theology, you'll notice that this sounds sort of like the opposite of Christianity, and St. Dominic thought so too. Christianity has at its center not a God who rejects physical things in disgust, but so fully loves and accepts physical things as to become a human person with everything this entails, for example, a body. So in this historical context, with everybody around him tempted to turn up their noses at the flesh, St. Dominic thought it a good idea to introduce a piety that meditates on the goodness of the flesh, specifically where Jesus got his flesh from, his mother Mary. The rhythmic prayer of the rosary has an ancient tradition behind it. It really begins with the monastic communities who were praying 150 psalms, and those who were not part of monastic life still wanted to pray, in this, um, with the sense that they're also praying the psalms. So they would use beads to mark each psalm, and with each bead there would be some type of um, worship of God the Father, praying the Our Father. And by the medieval period, these 150 psalms, 150 beads, 150 prayers were developed into the rosary emphasizing the humanity of Jesus. So if you look at the different prayers in the rosary, um, what we would reflect on has to do with the life of Jesus beginning with his conception. And then, of course, the life of the Christian, who at the end of their journey um, will be crowned as the Virgin Mary was crowned with glory. We will also be crowned with glory if we are faithful to the teachings of Christ. So it is the journey uh, of the Christian, but it emphasizes the humanity of Jesus. This was the heresy that the uh, Dominicans were combating, uh, they were fighting against, and uh, it's the reason why we would pray the rosary. This would be the way to overcome this heresy that despised the material world. The rosary has remained a popular devotion, perhaps in part due to the popularity of the Albigensian heresy, versions of which popped up with the Gnostics in the second century and in certain forms of body-shaming Christian communities today. And you still have elements of this heresy where um, the material, the sensory, is, is despised, whether it's in the form of statues, whether it's in the form of sacraments or sacramentals. There is this rejection of it. This is underlying this rejection of the material world is agnostic heresy. We need to remember the material world was created by God. He is the creator and everything he created is good. And so the Dominicans with the rosary wanted to emphasize the value, the, the um, significance of Jesus coming in the flesh. There's a passage in scripture which talks about we're not to pray as the Gentiles, vainly repeating ourselves. And really we have to understand the context of that, which is there's not some magic formula, some incantation. We're not conjuring up some sort of spell to control God to get what we want. That, that certainly is wrong. And yes, when one prays the rosary in such a manner that one thinks he can get what he wants, that one can control God, um, that's deeply problematic. 
Jesus himself teaches the disciples when they ask, teach us how to pray. He gives them a prayer. He gives them the Our Father. All right? So at what point do we repeat the Our Father, the prayers and the formula of the prayer that he has given us? If I Did he give us the Our Father to pray at once? How, how often can I pray before it's repetition? Who decides that I prayed it once in one day and you can't pray it more than that because otherwise it's repetition? I mean, it becomes completely irrational. We are given a prayer and we can pray it as often as we want. And Jesus himself gave us a formulaic prayer telling us how to pray. When you pray, this is what to pray. It's a meditative prayer in which one should pray, I'd argue, slowly. The rosary is not something to get through. Oh, I prayed my five decades, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm holy, I'm good. Um, that's not the point, it's never the point of prayer. I began praying the rosary before I was Catholic and it, it healed my life in many ways. It was extremely transformative.